Thank you. And uh, I would just like you to repeat a part of your message, which is um, that it's not all Muslims. It is. That, I think that's very, very important in, in today's he, he has, Let me clarify. Yeah. I have repeated that for 14 years. Not just me, you and every Western politician has been in cricketing terms batting with a ri on the back foot. We have seen the results, we have dead Canadians on our hand, and we have Toronto 18, the Digi bomber, the VRL bombers, and we all come back to the defensive notion. Of course not all Germans were Nazis. But did we sit around conference room during the Second World War saying, oh, what happens if a German got upset? I am suggesting to you that 14 years is long enough for not a single mosque imam to say, I renounce the doctrine of jihad. What would it take for someone to say, in this day and age, the doctrine of armed jihad is inapplicable, inadmissible, and we, re we live as nation states. We do not have communities based on inherited race or religion. Our citizenship is based on human created laws that can be changed by subsequent generations, not divine text sent by messengers that are immutable for all times. Thank you. Number one, lay hate speech charges against any Muslim cleric who hides behind religious rights to attack and demonizes members of another faith or another religion, as is done every Friday in every mosque of this country. Every mosque must be monitored for such hate speech, where the word kuffar is invoked to hide the real target, which is Hindus, Christians, and Jews. Any mosque indulging in active politics must have the charitable status revoked. We have the law, we simply don't implement it. Donations of more than $20 at all religious institutions must be made by check or credit card to cut off possibility of money laundering, which I have witnessed. Number five, immigration from Pakistan, Somalia, Iran, Iraq, and Syria must be suspended until Canada can be assured that the security documents, identity papers, and university degrees cannot be bought in the black market or from state agencies. I am aware of how in Pakistan and Somalia and in Iran, someone by name, for example, Asarik Fatah, could overnight become Abdul Khan or Behroz Hamadan with documents and degrees to cheat the best of sleuths because the documents would be genuine, not forged. Identify Muslim groups who are hostile to Islamists and enable them to fight Islamism. In Canada, from the sowing of the seed to the harvesting of the crop, over here I mean Canadian Kurds, the Baloch, the African Darfuris, and the victims of Iran's relentless atrocities on its citizens. As one measure, Canada should re-examine the false designation of the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party, as a terrorist group, which we have done at the insistence of Turkey, which, by the way, is the main funder and supporter of ISIS, which PKK is the only group fighting ISIS. Had it not been for the PKK and the Syrian Kurdish counterpart, the YPJ, a human slaughter of immense proportions would have taken place on Sinjar Mountain and Kobani would have fallen to ISIS. It is unfathomable to me that we would be allies with Turkey and Qatar, who funded if not created ISIS, but that we treat PKK as terrorists when that group has saved tens of thousands of lives and did not flee like the American-supplied Iraqi army. Senators, in the Second World War, we were allies with Stalin because we had to destroy Hitler. Today, the people who fight on our behalf have been designated as terrorists, and the people who wish to destroy us are members of NATO. I will suggest my final recommendation, which might seem very trivial, but is extremely significant in what message we send out. We should ban the burqa in public in, as an example set by the Republic of France, and that has been upheld by the European Human Rights Commission and the court for two reasons. 
the robbery that took place of half a million dollars of jewelry in Toronto last week could very well have been a terrorist attack by men wearing burqas, which has happened. Number two, by saying that we as Canadians refuse and reject a value that suggests that women are the source of all sin and therefore should be restricted in their home, we will send a clear message that if you wish to wear a burqa, you are free to wear it in your home. But on our streets, we would not like our children to be scared of people who wear clothes that literally frighten infants. Thank you very much. The, the way you look at it, Senator, is not how the world works in the realm of Islamism. We don't need a structure. Many of the things that I have pointed out are generated in the minds of infants, of five-year-old boys who are dressed up as medieval uh, invaders of Europe. My name, Tariq, is a name given to me because of the general who invaded Spain in the year 711. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need the infrastructure that you are looking for. What is happening is that the ideology of Islamism has escaped attention from everyone from President Bush right down to President Obama and Prime Minister Cameron. In all of the Western world and the OECD countries, only one politician has had the courage to say in so many words that Islamism is a great threat, and that is our Prime Minister Stephen Harper. No one else has had the guts, the ability to say that we are fighting an enemy that is structured around a death cult of a fascist ideology that considers Earth to be a transit lounge to the final destination where life will begin after death in paradise. And to most people in the West this seems like a joke. To every Muslim that is a fact of life. Senator, they are laughing at the RCMP behind your backs, these young men. These are highly staged events. These are money-making events. De-radicalization program is a joint venture between companies, consultants and academics who have a vested interest in this. You cannot produce one de-radicalized person in the last 14 years. Each one of the people who is marketing himself as a former radical is doing so for financial purposes. You show me one person who says that he has been de-radicalized. One former radical from Gitmo who says that jihad is inapplicable. Out of a thousand Islamists there will be one jihadist. What we are doing is saying, how do we fight Islamism? The way we fight chicken pox, that we introduce some uh, same germs so they can destroy the other germ? No. This is cancer. You're introducing tumors where tumors already exist. This has become a profit-making venture. For me and many secular liberal colleagues, we know this is a war declared on us. Unfortunately, for many other civil servants and uh, uh, folks, this is a money-making venture. You form a committee, you bring a proposal, you get funded. Millions have been spent and we cannot defeat men in caves? Trillions! Imagine the amount, hundreds of billions the Americans spent in Iraq and the army ran away, yet not a single American general has been held accountable because it was a total fraud. Nobody dares say that there were billions that were stolen in this enterprise. The Brits and the Canadians have had a very good record in having armed forces that fight with dignity. The private guards and private mercenaries and the, even Snowden is not a CIA employee. Since when did we fight our enemy by contracting out to, out to private forces? Even the people who vetted Snowden was a private company. You cannot win a war against people who are dedicated to die for no money whatsoever and face them with people who go on tours of duty, a term unheard of in the First or the Second World War.
Don't recruit an army saying that get a degree in engineering or an American citizenship by serving a term in Iran. Those people don't fight wars. They want to come back and run a company. So what's happening with us is, and this is a rare opportunity for me, because nobody wishes to speak to the ordinary Muslim. 90% of us don't go to a mosque senator. 90% of us have no affiliation with any mosque. We are architects. We are cab drivers. We may even be pole dancers. But none of us dress up in that medieval costume that the RCMP and the CSIS have in a racist way imposed on us as our identity. Do you think after 25 years I need to wear a dress like a Saudi to be believed by you that I'm an authentic Muslim? Would you? This is blackface in my face. I am not a joker. I'm a Muslim Canadian. I came here to escape those tyrants and the RCMP and CSIS are feeding them. I have been to the CCR meetings and I met a member as senior as an assistant minister who was a Muslim briefing us at the Friday prayers on how, what story to give to the RCMP officers. A con job of, that I was, if I was anyone in the government, I would charge that man for being a traitor to this country, to the place that gave our parents and us a place to be free. I can't speak in Canada and you bring the people who had wanted to kill me and make them as RCMP advisors? We would have lost the Second World War if we had the same leadership in Canada and Britain as we have today in our intelligentsia. If I may, Mr. Chair, obviously you don't think the program works. That's pretty clear. I'm, I'm you. asking you the question, and what will work? Because we are having people in this country who are, if not before, now, finding themselves in a position of supporting something that involves killing Canadians. First thing is, we stop um, uh, suspend immigration from Iran, Pakistan, Somalia. You cannot have, I can take you to Mississauga Road or the million dollar mansions of Pakistani generals of the ISI, which is not ISIS by the way, who live here amongst us. You want to know the foreign students over here. The MSA, the Muslim Students Association, designated by the Muslim Brotherhood as their front, is hosting an event in Windsor on the 26th where an RCMP superintendent is sitting down with two Islamists. Would that RCMP come to an event that we would do? Impossible. There's nothing to offer. I have no exotic meals to, to uh, offer to, uh, during Ramadan to these hundreds of RCMP and CSIS and Toronto police officers that every Ramadan have a feast day. It's multiculturalism gone mad, Senators. And our country is being hurt, and nobody is watching the The Mounties don't get their man, I can assure you. Not today. 